I'm just, um, because they're making claims that, um, that the Vaughnville Zoo rents out the elephant to circuses. That's not true. What is, what is true is that Bowmanville Zoo puts on uh, circuses, Bowmanville Zoo does feature films, Bowmanville Zoo supplies camels for camel rides at the Toronto Zoo, Bowmanville Zoo provides elephants for Hindu weddings, we absolutely do all of that. Okay. And we do it on a number of levels. Number one, we're a private zoo. Right. And um, Toronto Zoo is an example, 25% of their budget, publicly financed. All the money, that, and we don't have that option. Right. All the money we make goes into the animals, every cent. We are an accredited facility within the Canadian, uh, Canada's accredited zoos and aquariums, the World Association of Accredited Zoos and Aquariums, so we have very high standards. Okay. And it's like having your children. You always can put more money in. Right. So I have, and I make no excuses all for the fact that we work our animals. It keeps them engaged, it keeps them active, and they actually benefit from it. And the analogy I would draw with human beings, we see so often when a human being retires, they don't last long, and they drop off. So. It's done, well, and we also do it appropriately, okay? So uh, we have a, a, a trailer that's specifically designed for, are we still good on time? Yep. Okay, we have a trailer that's specifically designed for Limba. It has a furnace in it. It has air conditioning. It has air ride. So she's comfortable, okay? And this is really important to us. So um, they're right, but I, I would never uh, rent an animal to someone without one of our trainers going with it. We would, we have never, we would never do that. Because it's always about the human animal Okay. They're also making claims that uh, that the elephant has been in three car accidents That's being not transported. True. That's not true. Okay. She was in one accident that happened ten years ago, maybe eight years ago, on the west coast of Newfoundland, and the the truck did flip on its side. Absolutely. However, she wasn't injured. We we used you know the resources we threw at that to make it to fix it right. were huge. So absolutely, an accident happened, but. I don't know about you, but I've been in an accident. Most people don't get through life without being in an accident. Right. It's what you do when the accident occurs. Right. And we, we put tremendous resources in to make sure she was all right. And she is. Okay. And um, the use of the, the bull hook in the sensitive areas in which to train and control yeah. the animal? Yeah. Not true. So we're at, we have a show on in uh, around 15, 20 minutes. I invite you to it. Come have a look and you'll see how we handle uh, Limba. Um, the, the use of an elephant hook, it, it's like any tool. There's a time to use it and there's a time not to use it. I, uh, with Limbo, we don't have to use it. This is a sweet, um, congenial, you know, very giving elephant. Um, in some situations, it's warranted depending on the elephant. You have elephants that are very boisterous, that perhaps, just like a child. You have, you know, you see them in the zoo. Some children are good holding their mom's hand. Right. Other ones need the other ones need the leash. Right. So it's the same thing. But Limba, no. What do you say to them when they? What would you say to them when they say that? You know, these these, especially the elephant in question, should be in a sanctuary where they have much more room to roam, and the claim of said slavery that that they're being enslaved in here how do you how do you respond to that um, limba was uh, by herself for the first 30 years of her life as, as a couple of weeks, excuse me oh yeah oh i'm sorry i my, my mistake you know, okay. i said it was okay yeah come on in he's got he got to go if we got our people wearing the shirts he has to be able to wear okay the so shirts. we're going around and up yep thank you very much gentleman wants to come see the show I, I embrace that. Absolutely. Well. So coming back, so she was by herself for the first 30 years of her life. Right. Okay. It was, it, and I didn't have her, and that was a tragedy. It was absolutely a tragedy, and she came out of it with um, PTSD, post-traumatic uh, stress. She absolutely did. And so she's a damaged elephant. Um, we tried when we when we first got her. We had a number of elephants here. She never took to them. She would stand off by the corner. They would bully her. And I was actually going to get, look. I was finding out facilities to try and move her on. And um, uh, actually, my son, <laughs> who's now 18, was born. And he was in the barn when he was two days old. And she just took a real shine to him. And almost you hear about these elves being aunties, and she became his auntie. And he spent all his youth with her. He learned how to walk in between her front legs. And the and I'm going to say love. You know, lots of people say it's anthropomorphic. The love that that elephant developed because of that child right. gave her confidence and made her work with the other elephants better. Never good, I would say, really honest with you, because she was by herself for 30 years. 
It's like you take a human being, you put them in a basement for 30 years. Yeah. They're gonna what be, are they going to be? They're going to be yeah. messed up. Yeah. So you take her to a sanctuary. She, you know, she's not going to uh, fit in well with the other elephants. Um, Limba uh, goes on walks every day. I mean, so the elephant in the sanctuary, yes, let's say they have a 10-acre pen. Let's say they have a 20-acre pen. Limba has swam in the, in the Atlantic Ocean, and she swam in the Pacific Ocean. She's got the world. Okay, she truly does. And her um, trainer, Robert, I mean, he, he sleeps in the woods with her at night. Okay, so she has, in terms of space, and more importantly, in terms of changing space and different stimuli, she has it way ahead of the uh, sanctuaries. The other reality is in both sanctuaries that are available in North America, they both have very high levels of tuberculosis in the population. So I would say to you, here's the analogy I draw. If you are, um, if you have your mom, and she's getting older and she has to go into a uh, senior's home, are you gonna send her into a home that is known to have C. difficile or TB or you're not. Yeah. So it's madness to put an, a clean elephant into that environment. Because the issue is that they, in the sanctuaries, they don't tend to have a very really good uh, stimuli control over their elephants. And the drugs that you need to control the, the tuberculosis are very, very toxic. The elephants don't want to take them. So they're not able to treat the elephants. How moral is that? So you're holding animals that you can't provide medical care for. doesn't make sense to me so they you know I don't agree with their, their premise uh, and again I invite you to the show come and see the show right now oh, I've lived in Bowmanville oh. for over 20 years okay so, so like, you've seen I, I know Kevin's one of my Kevin okay. Thatcher is a, is a good buddy of mine oh, okay good so um, you know you've heard the stories and you know and to me really importantly if you haven't um, been to the scene don't describe the scenery yeah. you know we had one gentleman going in great okay there's no other ones. You yeah. Know? And I find it very frustrating because um, today I, you know, we I specifically intentionally did it a free day so they'd get a exp exposure and so we could go in and have a good dialogue in the anima theater. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Yeah. So. Well, I thank you. I thank you for your time. Could you state your name, maybe? My name is Mike Hackenberger, and I'm director of Bowmanville Zoo. All right.